Hello dear friends. This is your friend Roy Olson, pastor and missionary to Romania, speaking to you from my office in Apavia. And I believe I have a powerful, solid foundation upon which to have a victorious and a successful life. And uh, it's not a mystery. It's not something that was just discovered, except it's strongly on my heart. Because if we don't have this, about which I'm going to speak, we can react to situations, things, circumstances, what people do, what we have done, we can react to it in a very wrong way and therefore bring our faith a downward, in a downward spiral and um, have all sorts of emotional reactions and negative because things just don't turn out the way we expect. And uh, I'm sure those of you who are listening to me know very well that stuff happens in life. And uh, stuff happens to Christians, believers, good believers, strong believers, as well as to non-believers. The difference seems to be not in the events or circumstances, but the difference is the reaction to those circumstances. I think I've got a gold mine here. And it's not something you don't already know, but uh, Peter says I bring these things to your remembrance. And so, just to remind you, and I'm referring to something that we know. I think you can see that. This is something that we know. Now, uh, some people uh, say, well, I, I hope so. I'm believing. But this seems to be an even stronger foundational word of assurance and of absolute certainty. And so the Apostle Paul uses this word, we know. So this is something that you, brother and sister and I, we know this. Well, what is it that we know? Well, the next one is this, that God is involved. God, not people, not family. Yes, they are, but no, God is involved in this. God can do what he wants, when he wants it, in keeping with his character and his divine plan. This is something that God does. This, this God to whom we refer is the creator, the creator of all things. He is, he is before the beginning. He is the creator of the beginning. He is, we use these words, he is omniscient, all-knowing, omnipotent, all-powerful, omnipresent. He is everywhere. There is no place where he is not. We're talking about the supreme ruler of the universe, governments, kings, presidents, uh, parliaments bow down in awe to God. So this is something that we know about God. And what is it that uh, the Apostle Paul says that we know about God? Well, <clears throat> he uses the word all here. We, we know that God works uh, by a, a process known only to Him and can only happen by Him, that God works this many things. How many things? All of them. 
Now there are there are some things that are, are bad. There are some things that are evil. There are some things that are hurtful, as well as great things and blessings and so on. Even in our own lives, you know, I, I certainly have failed God. I failed myself. Uh, so how can I expect that I have not failed God, who is even higher than myself? And uh, the Apostle Paul knew that. He said, the things that I want to do, I don't do the things that I wanted, uh, things that I, uh, I lost my um, thing here, but it seemed that he was doing everything wrong. When he wanted to do right, he did wrong. When he wanted to do wrong, he, it, it was just a mess. And uh, so he, we know that too. Um, there was a song, he takes, makes beautiful things out of broken pieces or something of that kind. And so when the word used here is all, it means the good, the bad, the ugly. Uh, it doesn't only mean ice cream and peaches and sundaes and, uh, and chocolate or whatever your thing is. Uh, no. It means the hurtful things, the wounded. It doesn't say it doesn't hurt. It doesn't say it doesn't cause pain. It, it doesn't say that you're going through an emotional, it doesn't, it doesn't have anything to do with that. Those are things that we experience as human beings, uh, emotional. In fact, the Bible says that people who live that way, they are sensual. That means they live by their senses. And we are called not to live by what we see or hear or feel or think. Uh, the Bible very clearly says we, we, we live, we walk by faith. And this is something that when well, God says in the Apostle Paul writing here, he says, God works, God, we know this, that God, He, he works by a process only he can do. He works all of them, the hurtful things, the, the devastating things. Oh, have you ever been devastated? I have been there, done that, don't want to go back, but I, I think I, I may have to face that again. But God, all, if it's not all, then it's not all. If we can exclude some things, then it's not all. But the, the, the message is very clear that God works. We know this, that God works all things. All things. And how does he do that? Well, he does it by a process called together. God makes, God uh, uh, takes all things and works them together. I use the illustration of my mother's Swedish pancake recipe. Uh, the French call them crepes, they're thin uh, pancakes. And uh, she gave me the recipe. And you know, if you take the individual ingredients, like salt, or raw eggs, or oil, or flour, or some other of my secret ingredients that my mother gave me. <clears throat> you know, if you take them individually, they don't taste very good. But when you mix them up in a mixing bowl, and you make yourself a nice batter, and you put that batter in a thin layer on a nice hot frying pan, and then when it's uh, at the right time, you flip it over, You've got something, especially if you drizzle a little chocolate on it. Uh, well, God takes the things that have been hurtful, bad, let's see, the salt things of life, uh, the not so uh, taste things in life, but when God gets through with it and mixes it up with all the rest of the stuff, that's how God works. He takes the good, the bad, the ugly, he takes our experiences, our woundedness, our ecstasy, and he takes it all together. Remember that word, not separately, but all together. 
And what does he do with it? Dear friend, he makes something good. The results are inevitably good. Now, I, I mentioned that, you know, stuff that happens to everybody, but <clears throat> it, it, it doesn't work out good for everybody. It doesn't work that way. Because the, the following um, uh, two key words will help uh, explain that. It's, it's not what people do to you that counts. It's how you respond to what people do to you that counts. Folks, God is good. And God is, if God isn't alive, you know, take this word and just put it in the trash can, ignore it. And you'll have the same outcome as the world does. You'll be worrying, you'll be grieving over much. You'll wonder, oh, it's a disaster, your life has been ruined kind of stuff. No, not if you believe, not if you know, not if you stand on this absolute assurance from Scripture that you know this. You come to the time in your Christian experience where you stop fretting and worrying and you stand by, wow, I wonder how God will make something good out of this disaster. It doesn't happen all at once. Sometimes there's a, there's a process through which we go through. We got a, the, the, we used to call it stand in faith, standing on the word, uh, believing God, trusting God, knowing God, like the apostle. He, he said, I know whom I have believed. Do you know him? Have you got experience under your belt? Have you been through some battles? And now in retrospect, you can see how God worked it out for something good. Absolutely. So um, <clears throat> you've got some experience and now you're, you're in a pickle, you're in a difficult place and things have happened. They, they make you sad, they make you wounded and you wonder what's gonna happen and the enemy of our souls and our natural minds will see everything going downhill. But for people who know, who know that I know whom I have believed, uh, and I am, I know I'm, and I am assured, I am convinced that He is good for His promises, and I know that God works all things. How many things? All things. Let me get my all here. God works all things together, excuse me, together for good. So if you really believe that, let me tell you, uh, uh, let me give you a, um, an, an experiment, a scientific experiment, kind of. When you're in the middle of the storm and everything looks bleak and dark and downhill and defeat and, and, and so on, and in the middle of that emotional and uh, financial or whatever it is crisis, you can look up to heaven and say, thank you, Lord. I don't understand, I don't see, I don't perceive, it doesn't seem logical, but this thing I know, that in this immediate situation, you, God, are taking this and you are working all this together and something good is going to come out of this. And so I worship you. I praise you. I don't see the good. I don't feel the good right now. But I know that you are involved in this process. And it's coming. Something good is coming. And so I worship you and I praise you now in the middle of the storm. Because of something that I know. I know my God. I know whom I have believed. I have experience under my belt. I have the promise of God. 
I am convinced that the word of God is true. And so therefore, this I know. Let me ask you a question. Do you know? Do you know? Can you, can you uh, rest in the knowledge and the assurance that God is working all things together for good? Do you know it? If you do know it, you can praise God now. Because you know something, Jesus had to do that. You remember it says, for the joy that was set before him. He knew something good was coming down the road. He knew something good was coming out of this. So he was endured the shame. He endured the cross. He endured the pain. He endured the present because of what he knew is coming. You need to hang in there. Endure the present. And you may as well enjoy it, the ride, uh, if you can. If you can worship God and praise Him in the middle of the storm, everything changes, your attitude changes. And uh, dear saints, we live by faith and not by sight. Sight uh, means, uh, you know, what we see, what we feel, what we think. And so it all filters out through our natural being rather than through the mind and the heart and the word and the principles of God's living, vital word. And so I said it doesn't happen to everybody. And the Bible is very clear about that in Romans 8, 28. It says, for those who, who love God. Now, uh, come on. I don't think that uh, that uh, I, I love God perfectly. I love Him as best I can. You know, I, and it's not just an emotion. You know, I, I love you, baby, today, and oh, I don't love you anymore. You know, that's a country and western song. But the Word of God is, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, uh, not clanging bells and tingling singables. But, uh, but facts, solid, hopeth all things, beareth all things, endureth all things. If there be any, uh, uh, these three, faith, hope, love, the greatest of these is love. And if you love God, not perfectly, but you love Him, if you love Him, then you qualify for the first part here. For those who love God and... Uh, and then for those who are called according to his purpose. What does that mean? That means your life has significance, your life has destiny, and you have an enemy who wants to shut you up, shut you down, shut you in, and steal, kill, and destroy your calling. Oh, I'm not called. Oh, yes, you are. Well, I don't have great kids. Oh, yes, you are. And you've got something inside of you that your generation needs. And the enemy of your soul and of God's kingdom wants to shut that down so your generation, your family, your environment doesn't get what God put within inside of you. I wish I had some gifts. Oh, I love to sing. I am moved with people who who sing and got these musical talents in the, my home church. Uh, you know, we, we've got some gifted singers. They move me. I'm encouraged by, and, and I would like to encourage people by being able to sing. <laughs> I don't have it. What can I do? Uh, that's not what God has gifted me to do. What has God gifted you to do, Roy? I think he's given me to do exactly what I'm doing right now. I, uh, the motto of our work here in uh, Romania is information, inspiration, impartation, implementation. Give them the facts. Motivate them, inspire them to live on the principles of God's word. Trust the Holy Spirit to impart it. That's just not head knowledge. But it's, it'll change the way you think, the way you act, the way you believe. 
It's imparted to you by the power of the Holy Spirit and then you uh, uh, in, in give it to this generation, implementation, put it to use. <clears throat> Dear friend, God has put something with inside of you and you are called. Being called doesn't make it every, uh, any easier. Uh, oh, how can you say that, Roy? Well, I can say it because I read about Moses who was called. And I read about his years of being in the wilderness. I read about that and I read about the calling of God that after all those years God called him back to where he began with just a, a time period. Well, is that all? No, I, I, I read about uh, uh, Joseph before that. And Joseph had a, a calling. Remember the sheaves, remember the, uh, and so on. Remember what happened to him. You remember the brothers, you remember the pit, you remember the, the uh, merchants, you remember Potiphar. You remember Potiphar's wife. You remember the butcher and the baker and the candlestick maker in, in the jail there. And you remember Joseph, even when he was in jail, the gifts of the Holy Spirit were flowing. How about, <laughs> how about us in our circumstances? It's always easy. No, it's not always easy. When you're called, it's not always easy. But that doesn't change the fact that you're called. And by God, people are called, churches are called, ministries are called. And it's by the will of God to accomplish something for the kingdom of God on earth while we're here. And so, dear friend, please don't, don't argue with me about what you're, whether or not you're called. <laughs> Hey, go you lose because uh, according to each man according to the measure of his faith and so I, I don't know if I've accomplished what's in my heart to do but what's in my heart to do is to encourage you dear saints to to press on to believe God and if you wait until everything is settled, everything's done, and so on, and then you rejoice and thank God and you worship Him, then, uh, you know, it's a little late. Anybody can, when everything is uh, working just so fine, uh, anybody can can uh, sing and dance and worship and have a good time. But those of great faith can do it in the middle of the storm. Why? Because there's something that they know they are absolutely certain and assured of, and uh, we have that as also. We know that God works all things, how many? All of them, together for good. For me, for us, why? Because we love God. And we, we get up in the morning because our life has significance and purpose because we're called. Well, Thanks for listening, and uh, may God bless you. And oh, as we go into the world and stuff happens, let's continue to trust God. And good is coming out of this. My name is Roy Olson. I'm a missionary to Romania, and I'm your friend. <laughs>